So if one tries to take this purification of motive as a sort of a very major aspect of, of Buddhist practice, um, would that then sort of quite naturally express in, say, with one's livelihood or other aspects well, one of one's would hope well. that it would, in yeah. one's livelihood, in one's relations with other people, mm -hmm. in one's art, if mm -hmm. one was an artist, mm -hmm. if one, in one's writing, if mm -hmm. one was a writer, yeah. Yeah. in one's, one's general economic life, or one's whole yeah. lifestyle, as we say. Yeah. Are there any elaborate concepts in traditional Buddhism for that which might be applicable in the West? Elaborate today. concepts in yeah, the Yeah, well, elaborate, uh, say, formulations of the... Well, you have mentioned the principle of right livelihood, mm. yeah? And this is traditionally suggesting mm. well, that certain professions should not be mm. um, undertaken, while others mm. may be more conducive to the spiritual life. Mm. Is, does the same apply to other areas, like politics, for mm. example, or mm. others? In the Buddhist day, of course, society was, was much more simple than it yes. is today. Today it's enormously complicated, yeah. and uh, various uh, scientific discoveries and applications of scientific discoveries have made it very complex indeed. Mm. And for instance, even in the medical field, where mm. all sorts of ethical issues arise, issues uh, by which Buddhists, as others, are confronted. So I, I think that it is uh, more a question of trying to apply basic Buddhist principles to specific situations in the West, rather than taking hints regarding specific situations in the East mm -hmm. and applying them. Mm -hmm. to specific right. situations yeah. in the West. It's more the general principles. And which principles would you be particularly thinking of here? Well, I'm thinking, for instance, of something very basic, uh, like the, the, the principle that's involved in the first precept, the precept uh, to abstaining, uh, the precept uh, to abstain from uh, harming living beings, yeah. especially uh, from taking from taking life. Mm. This introduces, of course, the, the whole question of the environment, yeah. the way in which we treat our natural environment, the way in which we treat other forms of life, mm -hmm. our attitude to animals, mm. our attitude to vegetation, mm. our attitude to problems like that of uh, deforestation and mm. reforestation. Mm. Mm. I think these are all matters of, of deep concern to Buddhists as Buddhists. Not indirect concern, but even direct concern, mm. because mm. Uh, they, they, they do involve uh, the, the application or non-application of a really quite basic Buddhist principle, mm. in a sense the, the first Buddhist principle, mm -hmm. that through your life, through mm. living your life, you should not harm, or at least mm. not cause unnecessary harm to other forms mm -hmm. of life, mm -hmm. that you should live and let live. Mm -hmm. That seems, in terms of the environment, even to, in a way, turn around the argumentation which very often is used by green mm. people mm. when they say, well, we want to preserve the earth because it gives nutrition, etc., to us. It's so important to us. We want to preserve our nature. But mm. the Buddhist approach mm. seems to be quite different there. Is that mm. right? I'm not sure what the green argument would be. But it could be that uh, green people want to appeal to people's natural selfishness, yeah. that uh, human life can't exist without vegetable life, let's mm -hmm. say. So it is therefore in the interest of human beings to look after the various vegetable species, mm -hmm. in particular the trees, for various reasons. Mm -hmm. So yes, that is, one could say, a valid uh, argument from a certain point of view. But uh, I think the, the Buddhist point of view, or the Buddhist argument, would be more that uh, all forms of life have their own intrinsic uh, value, mm. that every form of life wishes to persist, wishes to go on living, and you have to respect that. Mm. You as a human being want to go on living. A tree, so to speak, as a tree, wants to go on living. That's its mm. natural urge or impulse even if it isn't conscious mm. or isn't self-conscious. So you should respect that. You should respect mm. in the tree what you would like. The tree, for instance, in a manner of speaking, to respect in you. Yeah. Not that you should look after the tree because it's useful to you, yeah. 
or that you should look after the hen because in that way you'll get better chicken to eat yeah. Yeah. or care for the cow because you'll get a better quality of beef. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's not a very noble argument right, from the yeah. Buddhist point of view, mm -hmm. though it may have a certain validity mm -hmm. uh, you know, with a, in, in view of people's uh, well, rather mm -hmm. non-altruistic attitudes. Mm -hmm.